everyone assalamu alaikum here we'll see how to do list view advanced operation using provider and at the same time we'll learn how to reduce unnecessary bills and which is very good and optimized for your app and this way your app would run very fast now first take a look what we are doing over here now over here we have a few names over here and these names are generated using a package which is called faker just go ahead and install faker package and which is this one so it gives us some random names it gives us five names in a list and return now since we are using riverpod so we are using state provider to return our shared data the data that would be shared changed the data that should maintain state so we are returning them using a state provider which is a provider and we save them in a variable which is called list provider now another thing happens over here in our code oh, this data is shown inside this list view builder so that's what we see over here and to get the data first we use our rafted watch to get the length of the total data and of course to be able to use it you have to make sure that in your class you have a consumer widget and at the same time at the same time inside the build method you have widget ref so that you can have the ref object available anyway so we get the length and then we also get the total list so if you write like this ref dot read and using your provider in general if it returns a list you'd be able to grab the list over here okay all right so from the provider we get the list the actual list that we can loop through and we can also get a certain item based on the index because we are inside this list view builder so our index is available based on this item count over here so for each item if we want to grab we use the list and index then we get the item and that certain item is shown over here and now here we see that elevated button and using this elevated button we can click any of them and wherever we click that changes like for example if I'm going to click this one it changes so these are names remember so I click over here and the name changed to a different name like Brent. Now how does it work? Over here you'll see that inside this unpressed method I have we go through this list provider which gets us a list and uh, since we loop through it over here using this index where so we send whatever the element is available at that moment in the loop that element and the item the item that we take so we compare them and uh, if it returns a true for that one we return this index okay so now index is over here so if this clicked item matches with one of the list from this list one of the item from this list provider for that one will get the index in our case the index should be 4 and then we generate a new name using this faker package and in that index we save a new generated name and we update our list so that's how it works over here so of course we are updating it using riverpod so that's what is happening so far now you can say what's the problem over here this is basic riverpod list and list update thing now this comes with a hidden cost it looks like everything is okay over here but it does come with a hidden cost over here what's the cost actually each time you click any of them the whole page rebuilds and all the item rebuilds even though I'm clicking over here like Brenna only Brenna should change and build but it changes everywhere how can we confirm that like for example we have Cody over here if we click we'll see Cody is printed and then we'll see page build and list view build okay let's confirm that now here we see that Cody has been built and page view and list view and we can see it from the log over here now page view is sits at the top very top and then we have this 
list view build okay so these are getting built over there and of course we have the button that is also being built now over here page view says at the top this should not build because I'm clicking on this button the whole page shouldn't build only the button the button that what I'm clicking that should change and but it is building the whole page as well as well as the whole list view builder because as you see list view build all of this logs and of course the item that we click on that sh that is also being built the one that was earlier so we clicked on that and that being built right and that's okay and this is what we want that certain element or item in the list view builder should be built so we want to optimize this and how do you do that so eventually we have to get rid of this unnecessary page build unnecessary list view build we'll just keep wherever we click that should be built so that's the idea so let's go ahead and work with this all right now the first thing we want to do we want to get rid of this list view builder from the scaffold we don't want this list view builder inside the scaffold this way hopefully we'll be able to reduce the uh, build number of builds we have all right so here we go after changing the code this is a new code so we still have this home page and then we separated this list view list view builder from our scaffold so now inside this we have a list view class which is this one and inside this class we have this list view builder and everything else stays the same we just separated them and then now let's go ahead and build it rebuild it all right okay now we'll see that this one will not get called anymore page build so let's go ahead and do that so I'm going to click on this Kaylee so over here this is Kaylee as you can see and we don't have page build and this was the earlier at the top at the very beginning okay now we don't have you can try it one more time like Gabe so we see Gabe over here but at the top we don't see page build all right so it means that our app is a little bit more optimized this time now the first thing we separated the widget from our page which is our main page which is scaffold so it looks like our app is still being rebuilt many times even the page is not being built but the items all of them are being built now for this reason we'll separate this code one more time from list view builder we'll separate this elevated button and some of the logics and somehow over here would invoke const like this because if we use somehow const that would help us to reduce the number of rebuilds because right now this index and the length is causing the problem so we need to work on them so let's go ahead and separate this elevated button from this list view builder this was our original list view and now over here we created a new class which is list item and list item we call it from here and as we call we pass the each item which is means we pass the each item which means passing each of the string over here and we grab it over here inside this constructor and like we once again get the list and then we get the index for this passing item the one that we pass and from that list and index and for the list and index we generate a new name and we update and this is pretty much the same as before but with this our performance is still not optimized if you go ahead and take a look over here like for example you click on Natalia we see Natalia and the rest of the items are also being built so this is still not working okay the reason is because over here we need to make this constructor before we return we want to make it const because we know if we can make a widget const it won't really get rebuilt unless it's really necessary so we have to do it over here const now if we are going to do it const we can't really pass this list item over here because if we pass we can't make it a const like for example if you make it a const over here 
you will get error. So that means that we have to get rid of this one. And in this way, this would become const. But of course, then you can't have any of this over here. Now, if we can't have any of this, how to work with this? Now, the idea is, the solution is, from here, somehow, we will generate index, and we'll grab that index over here. And we can always access our list view builder. We can always access our list from this list provider, because this is global, right? So this is always available. So we need to, weigh, we need to find a way to generate index and send it down to this one but not through this list item constructor and how to work with this. Now, for working with this, Riverport provides provider scope. So provider scope, we know that provider scope sits at the very root of your widget tree and it makes your provider available to all the widgets or all the children, but it does more than that. Let's go ahead and take a look. Provider scope. Now, as children, I'm gonna put this one and it should be same as before. Now over here, there is a property which is called overrides, so this one. And inside this, actually, we'll generate a new provider with, so inside this, we'll generate index for our provider. Now previously, we have seen that this list provider works with the list. So for index, actually, we need to create a new provider and we'll create a new provider and declare it over here. Over here, we have this new index provider and default value is zero. So it's returning an int and this int, the return value will use as our index, but the default value is zero. So we need to change this. We need to change this every time we run through this uh, list view builder loop. So we need to change how to do that. So first we'll access our index provider provider and then here we'd say override. So it will override the value, the previous value, the earlier value, and assign a new value, okay? So what is your new value? Our new value is this provider scope, okay? So our new value is this index over here, the index that we have in our list view builder. And of course, we need to remove this const from here, and we'll put the const over here, all right? Okay, so, as it goes through the loop, it will update index provider's value. So for first item, list view item, the index would be definitely zero. The second one would be one. The third one would be two, three, four, like that. So it makes sense. So it will create index for us synchronously. Okay, it will return index for us synchronously and we'd be able to access that from outside of this list view builder, the generated index using this index provider because these are all global variables, so you can access them from anywhere. So the default value, the earlier value would changed in each loop, and that's what we want to grab, the default, uh, the changed value. Hopefully it makes sense. Now, rest of the work should be pretty much over here. Now, as we said that, we need to grab the index. To grab the index over here, inside this build method, we'll have this two lines over here. With the first line, we get our index provider, and we get the certain related index. Remember, it'll go through a loop over here. So the first one, when it comes over here, by this time it'll have index zero, and as the build method gets called for the first one, the index definitely would be zero. Second time, as it goes through a loop, the index would be one, and then we'd grab it over here, okay? So that's how it should work. Now, if we get the index from the list provider, we can use that index to get the certain item, which means the certain name, okay? So that's how we are accessing the list using this index. Now, our index is available. Now, our item is available over here. Now, if our item is available and index is available, we don't need this one anymore. So we can get rid of this one because our index is always available. And we still have this list over here. We need that because we want to update our list after this button click. So we need that. And we generate a new name and assign for that index in the list. And eventually we update our state. We update our provider. All right. 
Now let's go ahead and run it. And now take a look over here. Okay, now we still see that everything being rebuilt again and again. But there is one more step before we really optimize everything. So this is alone is not working. All right, so where to optimize this one? Actually, this is where here we have to optimize. Now here we get the length, but actually this is not very optimized one because once you get length of a list directly like this, regardless it the list itself changes or not it recreates the builds again and again because we need to say for which certain property of your list you should rebuild the item with this what it does it checks for the changes and if there is a click anywhere it regards this list that it has changed everywhere and then it gets you the length so we shouldn't do it like this. We should specifically mention if certain property changes and then do rebuild. So here we do value dot length. With this, we are saying only if the length of this list view or the item of the list or the number of the total uh, items in the list should change then you go ahead and do the rebuild so with this I'm very sp I'm being very specific only if the total length changes you do rebuild otherwise never touch it don't do that okay now with this we are returning the length as well as we are saying at the same time to provider riverpod that hey if the length changes only you do rebuild otherwise you should not okay so this select property is very useful and which is available in Riverpod. Now over here, let's come over here and then we'll now reboot our app. Okay, so this is the first time and now click on this. Now here this time we see that only Michelle changed and only one log over here. Now I'm gonna click on Jerain one more time and we see Jerain. And you see that how we prevented this list view index. It's not printing anymore which means that over here it's not re being rebuilt again and again and over here it just being built that item because that item is being printed over here wherever you click that being rebuilt and printed this is awesome now the same thing over here it doesn't really matter okay so that's how you do advanced performance optimized list builder operation using riverpod